What's going on everybody? Neil Drennigan here. Today's video is going to be all about DSLR camera trapping. I'm going to cover everything from what cameras to use, which housings, flashes, sensors, trail cameras, you name it. It's all in today's video. Let's get started. hadn't cleaned the camera since the last time it was in the field. Which brings me to a good point. Uh, you don't want to drop two grand or heck a thousand dollars into a camera body just for camera trapping. It's not necessary at all. I personally uh, purchase used inexpensive Canon Rebel cameras off of eBay. I've got three two Canon Rebel T6s and then a T5 and I picked them up on eBay anywhere from $100 to $200 and it's a great camera. They've allowed me to get great pictures of squirrels, bobcats, raccoons, coyotes, deer, a little bit of everything. These camera bodies are around 18 megapixels and honestly 18 to 24 megapixels is perfect. Now if you have a, a much higher budget and you want to spend a little more money and have a little nicer camera in the field, by all means you can definitely do it. But for me personally, I went into this knowing that most likely I would be camera trapping around a lot of black bear and I know most likely they're going to destroy one in the future so I would rather spend $400 or $500 on multiple cameras. I can have multiple sets working for me 24-7 instead of just one. So that's what I use. Like I said, it's Canon Rebel T5, T6. You can start off with a Nikon D3200, 3100, D3000. Uh, really any entry level camera will do just fine. You're going to be using flashes, uh, external flashes to light your scene. So uh, your ISOs are going to be relatively low and so your image quality is going to look great no matter what camera you use. Um, which makes me think of this. Uh, when I first got started in camera trapping, I purchased the Nikon D610 uh, just for camera trapping. Hear that? That's because it got flooded. Uh, <laughs> got it dropped in the water and totally destroyed a brand new camera I had less than six months. Uh, and this was designed just for camera trapping. So I learned my lesson and yeah, it's just a paperweight now. So. Talking about cameras, now let's talk about lenses. So, same thing, you don't necessarily have to have the most expensive lens. Um, this is a kit lens, comes with the Canon Rebels. It's an 1855. You can pick these up used on eBay around 50 bucks. Um, it's all plastic, but that's okay, it doesn't matter. Lenses and cameras will do perfectly fine. Uh, I've gotten my best shot ever of a Bobcat taken with a Canon Rebel and a kit lens. Now I don't shoot mirrorless cameras in my camera traps just yet. I'm not ready to invest that much into my camera traps right now so that's coming in the future. I, I do have a lot of um, images that I'd love to create with a mirrorless camera and uh, there are benefits to having shooting mirrorless camera traps but there's also a lot of downsides too. The biggest one is battery power. Battery power and the mirrorless cameras just don't hold up like the DSLR camera batteries, so um, that's the biggest drawback for me. And then also, too, uh, a pro for using mirrorless cameras is to be able to shoot completely silently. Uh, that's the the one big downside to shooting with a DSLR. Uh, let's see if I've got a battery in one of these. Yeah, that's way too loud and actually kind of scares off a lot of animals. So if they're not used to the camera clicking and they hear that your animal is going to be gone. So that's the plus to shooting with mirrorless cameras. So getting on to the second part, well, which is flashes. This is probably the number one question that I get when it, uh, in regards to camera trapping. What flash can I use? What flash do you use? Uh, will this flash work? And so pretty much the simple answer to that is you can use any flash you want. You can use one that's 20 years old. You can use one that's uh, two months old does not matter at all. So probably the worst kept secret in the camera trapping community is going to be the Nikon SB28 flashes. This is what pretty much every camera trapper in the world is using uh, and there's a couple of reasons. The number one reason is the high refresh rate. So pretty much you put your AA batteries in and it the capacitor inside the, uh, the flash uh, stays charged 
a really long time. So after maybe five or 10 minutes, the flash goes to sleep. Well, if an animal comes by maybe three hours later, when the camera, the sensor is triggered, which triggers the camera, which then triggers a flash, it'll fire almost immediately. Uh, with your newer flashes, it takes it maybe a half a second to charge up just fast enough to fire off a couple frames. And by that time, uh, you may have missed the shot that you're after. So Nikon SB28 is the best flash out there. They don't make them anymore, but you can pick them up on eBay. When I first got started in camera trapping, I could find them on eBay for honestly about 20 to 25 bucks. Now they've gone up quite a bit. I'm, I'm still finding them occasionally around 40 $50, but most of them are $75. I've seen them as high as $150. Depends on how bad you want them. I am always on eBay looking for uh, flashes. I've got about 10 of these that work, and I've got about 10 of these that do not work. Uh, I've bought them over the years, and they, I've, they've, I've just been killing them. Bad weather conditions, being out in the elements for so long, just wears them out. And then um, obviously, these were made about 20 years ago, so uh, everyone that you find is going to be old to begin with so uh, if you can buy one pick it up but these are the flashes like I said it's the worst kept secret uh, in the photography community when it comes to really good flashes and they're Nikon they do not matter if you shoot Canon Nikon or Sony these flashes will work uh, I shoot wirelessly and I'll go over that in just a minute uh, so it doesn't matter at all which flashes you use but if you want the best flash for probably the best bang for your buck Nikon SB28 all right, so now I'm going over cameras, I'm going over flashes. The next most important thing you need is going to be your sensor. Let me move a little bit of this out of the way. So I use Camtraptions sensors. Camtraptions, you can find them online. Um, this is where I pretty much use them solely. Um, I am not sponsored by them. I would love to be sponsored by them. So if you're watching in the future, uh, I do use all the products, uh, everything that I have uh, from them, I've bought with my own money. And I've pretty much been with them since the beginning. Hold that thought. So I still actually have their first, their first generation PIR motion sensor and it worked okay there was a few flaws that i did not like um the way the battery compartment opened there's just a lot of few things that i did not like and their second generation sensor came out it is a nice little sensor it works just fine it's been spent a lot of time out in the field and pretty much it has built-in guides so um and pretty much what these sensors are they're it's an active motion sensor and so it's looking for heat in a way uh, and motion so it works just like think of it just like your motion activated lights on the outside of your home and so it's pretty much the same thing and so uh, anything moves in front of the, the sensor it will then trigger the camera which then triggers the flashes when you create your photograph and so with this particular model you're able to adjust the range so if you're wanting to shoot a much wider area or if you have like a trail or a crossing and with a very very narrow beam so you can actually uh, close them in just like that and then also too you have a couple of uh, switches you control the luminosity the delay so on and so forth and uh, they actually have an app that you can download uh, there's different modes so in this compartment over here there's all the different modes that you can set it on just the one thing if I could recommend I wish they would update their manual and their app to kind of give a bit there's so much you can do with this little thing and it is kind of overwhelming to begin with but once you get started in it you kind of figure out how things go uh, and it works out pretty well but contraption sensors are what I use there are other companies out there that you can purchase from Cognesis I believe is how you pronounce it they have a very good product um, I just recently purchased a product from them that I'm testing out so I hadn't done a review on that so I, I'm not really used it much um, but they have a really good product uh, trailcam.com they have some and you can also build your own uh, I am NOT an electrician I don't do very well with building my own so I let other people do it and I buy theirs um, but I've been very happy with my contraption sensors there's a few quirks about them but you'll figure it out pretty quick certain temperature ranges they work really really well in so some temperature ranges they take pictures all it seems like all the time okay so let's go over what's in my camera trap bag so I gotta move some stuff out of the way and I'm gonna show you everything that's in my bag oh. 
<sighs> okay, so this is the Pro Trekker 600 all weather made by Low Pro. I bought this bag many moons ago, several years back, uh, to use for my own location uh, traveling wildlife photography bag. It was just way too big for everything that I had that I put it in my closet. And when I started camera trapping, I was like, hey, this is actually going to be the best bag. So this is full of everything that I need for one camera trap. And so what I will do if I'm setting up two camera traps, I'll put everything in the back of my truck. Uh, so two housings, all the flash housings, all the sensors, uh, all the transmitters, receivers. When I go to set one up, I've got everything I need in this one particular bag. So let's go ahead and break into it. This bag, I have not weighed it, but if I had to guess, this bag would probably weigh around 50 to 60 pounds, maybe a little more. It is a beast. So everything that I need for one camera trap is located right here. And so we're gonna dive in one item at a time and show you everything that I have. So. For this particular set, most sets I use two or three flashes. So I've got three custom Pelican. They're actually called Apache 1800 Rugged Mobility Case. Went to my local Harbor Freight. I think they're like 10 bucks, it's nothing. And these are my flash housing. So you open it up inside and what I did is I actually just went in and cut a hole just big enough for the flash, closes down. Uh, and like I said, you have to do a little bit of customizing. I got a little piece of wood right here that connects to my RAM mount. I use RAM mounts. They're like mobile mounts that you can mount pretty much on anything. And they're two little ball heads. And so I bring a drill with me every time I go. And where I camera trap, there's always trees. Like very, very rarely is there no trees. And so I just will mount my flashes straight onto the tree. So this part here, if you loosen this up, kind of get an idea. This little ball head here will be screwed onto a tree. And then I lock it down and then I have full mobility and I can move the flash however way I need to to light my subject and I will go over more on setup in the next video uh, but this is just kind of give you an idea of the Pelican I call it Pelican the Apache 1800 rugged mobility case for my flash and so I have three of these they're covered in dirt and spider webs just because they live in the woods so I have three of these I've got one two to that and then the third one right here okay so uh, this little thing right here is made by Realtree and it's called an easy hanger it's pretty much a little bitty camera arm that you can screw into a tree and I use it for my sensors your sensor will actually come with a little threaded mount tripod mount and what I do is I have a couple of these, they're called easy hangers. I have a couple of these laying around. This is a smaller one, um, but there are larger ones. This little ball head here, get this in here. So this screws into the tree just like this. And then there's my sensor. So I can pretty much uh, have full control over where I can put my sensor and move it uh, anywhere that I want. I can put it up high and angle the, um, I can angle the sensor to, straight down. I've done that plenty of times so I could actually put the sensor into a tree, angle it straight down so when something crosses directly underneath it will trigger the camera. Uh, I have put it off to the side, I've put it off um, behind it, in front of it, and that it's a perfect little thing that I have found that works really really great. Uh, as long as it's within five or ten feet of the camera, it can actually go a little bit further, uh, it will trigger it. This little easy hanger is with me at all times. This is for one set. Okay, and so in this bag, each flash case has its own flash and its own wireless receiver. So when you open up the flash case, you have the flash with its wireless receiver. Each camera shoots with a wireless transmitter. So when this is in the housing, the wireless transmitter sends it to the receiver, which then triggers the flash. So each case has one flash with one receiver. So there's three flashes, three receivers. 
in these three cases. I also bring extra transmitters and receivers into the field just in case. When I go in and check camera traps, I've had literally everything happen uh, before. I've had flashes fail, I've had transmitters fail, I've had receivers fail, batteries in and they don't work. So uh, pretty much I bring about three extra receivers, three extra transmitters just in case. I also have three extra flashes on hand at all time in these bags. Like I said, most of the time when I go out to the field to check a camera trap, my camera traps could be 10 yards into the woods, they could be a mile into the woods. So everything that I need as a backup will be in this bag so I don't have to make multiple trips um, back and forth to the truck. So there's extra flashes, I've got three there. I've got uh, two extra sensors just in case. If a sensor dies out, craps out on me, it'll work. I then carry also a trail camera and a trail camera goes with every camera trap. I personally use the Browning trail cameras. They work phenomenally. They record high resolution, pretty good resolution um, video and it does not flash. So it uses infrared as well. And this is pretty much like a security. Uh, so if the camera trap fails for whatever reason and animals still pass through, it documents it. And then also too, I, I tend to hide one kind of off uh, the beaten path, pointed to the direction of the camera trap just in case somebody were to come in and steal it. I've got another one that's kind of hidden somewhere as a security system. So, so a trail camera goes with every camera trap. And so that's there. And then I've got an assortment of cables. Um, this one here will run from the uh, sensor to the camera. Like I said, a lot of times I will use uh, the wireless feature of these sensors, but sometimes I do like to use the cable just for the simple fact that it's faster. Senses something and sends it to the camera when it's wireless, it is a fraction of a second longer than when using a cable. So to get a faster trigger time, I'll use cables and I've got extras just in case they all fail. I've got additional cables, I've got additional transmitters, receivers, I've got extra straps just in case the trail camera uh, one breaks. I also have screwdrivers of every shape and size in this bag. I've got extra ram mounts. Everything that I need, if everything goes well and if everything goes horribly wrong, is in this bag uh, for my camera traps. One thing I have not mentioned so far is batteries. Currently, I am using single-use batteries. I am in the process of trying to find a really nice, high-quality, rechargeable AA and AAA system. The flashes are AA's along with the sensor, and all of my transmitter receivers are AAA's. They work pretty well uh, for the most part, but I go through a ton of batteries. So I'm trying to find a really nice rechargeable battery system that I can slowly switch to. Rechargeable AA's and AAA's are very expensive for the really good ones. Um, they're much better for the environment and I would prefer to do that, but honestly, I can't afford it at the moment. So I'm slowly um, converting everything over to rechargeable battery system. I just have to buy a few at a time. Now, uh, these AA's are lithium ions that I purchase and they work very, very good. Depending on temperature, ambient temperature and activity, they can last months. They could also last a day, but it all depends on activity and temperature. So that is pretty much the camera bag and everything in it that I need. So quick recap, we got three flashes, three, tran or three receivers, I've got extra flashes, extra receivers, extra transmitters, extra cables, extra batteries, um, trail camera, everything that I possibly need for one set is in this one bag. And so when I go and deploy this set out in the woods, I've got the second one in the truck ready to go. And I'll go load it back up, go set the next camera out and start all over again. Now I leave my camera traps out, uh, depending on the location, anywhere from a week to two weeks to a month at a time. Uh, I will go in and check them periodically. Again, it all depends on location, the accessibility, how easy it is to get into the camera. Uh, but a lot of times I like to leave the cameras two weeks at a time and then I'll go in. Um, I did have a couple camera traps that I checked twice a week. They're just really close to the house. The wildlife that was in that block of woods was used to a lot of human traffic anyway. So I would check them a couple times a week just cause it was pretty close. But most of the time I like to leave camera traps out 
for a week or more. Uh, and everything that I use is pretty much a long-term project. Most of the time it's a month, two months. I've had a uh, camera trap in woods before for over a year that I'd go uh, every two weeks and change batteries and check them and memory cards. So that's another thing too. Extra memory cards uh, always come in the bag along with my laptop and hard drive to empty uh, and dump memory off of the trail cameras and the cameras in the camera trap. So that is a long rundown of everything that is in this particular bag. Hell of a bag, really great bag, glad I bought it. Really great setup. Real quick, I wanted to make a little plug. Um, I've designed and printed my 2021 wildlife photography calendars. You can get them linked below in the description. Use the new company this year and I am super, super pleased with the quality of these calendars. I actually have a couple of camera trap photos in here. This one <laughs> being my, my favorite, which is my Bobcat one that I just got last year. So would love the support. Um, they're 20 bucks. So you can visit the link down in the description to get yours today. The first round of calendars is being mailed out this week. That's already been purchased. So thank you all to who have purchased a calendar uh, this year. If you'd like one, I can ship them worldwide. So if you would like a 2021 wildlife photography calendar by yours truly, get you one today, get you two, get you three, uh, get one for your dad, your brother, your mom, your sister, whoever. Just buy a calendar. Thanks. All right, lastly, let's talk about housings. Now, when I first got started, I purchased a housing that I used for probably the first year, maybe two years, and then I decided to construct my own. So pretty much all this is, is very simple. I use the same RAM mount um, uh, that I use for my flash, I use for the housing, except it's a little bit larger um, to actually mount the Pelican case to a pretty much just a homemade stand. And this is just made out of two before's I had lying around the shop, screwed them together, put a ram mount on it, and then was able to connect to my Pelican case. And now this is just your standard Pelican case. And it's a little dirty, just been out in the field. And pretty much on the inside, I put this one block of wood. I've got a mount here that would be typically found on a tripod. And so I have a quick release plate on the bottom of the cameras and they will just fall. It'll just clip right down inside of the housing just like this and it holds it and it's attached to the case. Now a lot of people will actually just leave the foam insert in here and actually cut out around the camera. That works too. Uh, if you notice, I do have some foam in here as well on the back side and that just kind of helps eliminate that sound of the shutter when it starts to take a photo. It's very, very simple. Just purchased a green Pelican case, cut out a hole in the middle. And then I epoxied and glued a 95 millimeter filter. And so if this filter ever breaks, uh, what I'll do is I'll leave this attached and then just screw in the next filter. There's multiple ways you can do this. This is what's worked for me. I've used ball heads to actually mount um, the case to the stand, but I found that the RAM mounts work very nice. Most of the subjects that I'm photographing from ground level, you know, relatively close to the ground, they're not really, really tall. So by using this RAM mount, I can actually really customize whether if the, the camera trap is on a heel, I can, let's see, I can show you like this, turn it sideways. So if the camera trap's up on a heel, I can then adjust the RAM mount to keep the camera level. If I need to shoot a little higher, I can extend it up like this or if I need to shoot lower, I can bring it down. And so it really kind of customizes the flexibility of the camera trap and it works very well. And this is, like I said, this is one of two that I've constructed out of Pelican cases that I've made over the years. And it works very well. It does exactly what I need it to do. I did recently purchase this housing from Chemtraptions. This is one that they make and it's really easy to use pretty much uh, the exact same thing as the Pelican case, your camera fits just inside here and then it will clamp around the edge and lock it in place and then you can actually change out these tubes. So if you wanted to shoot longer focal lengths with your camera trapping, you could. That's the main reason why I purchased it. I wanted to, number one, kind of test out the quality 
uh, of this particular trap. But the biggest thing is I like the flexibility of using these tubes for longer focal lengths. So I got a couple of camera trap plans in the future that I want to shoot with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. So as far as the housings are concerned, there's a lot of them on the market. You can either buy one already pre-made or you can make yours. Pelican case here cost me about $50. The ram mount cost me probably about 10, 15 bucks, and then I just had some two befores laying around the shop that I screwed together, and you know, less than $75, I've got a housing ready to go, and then just a, a filter that I had lying around. This one here, I don't remember the the price uh, for this one, but I'll I'll leave a link in the description for you to check them out. Um, again, this is a Cam Traptions one. But that's pretty much it. That's all the gear that I use for camera trapping. I know it's a lot, but it's pretty basic stuff. You got an entry level DSLR camera with a kit lens, a Pelican case with a hole in it with a filter, homemade stand, cheap flashes you can get off of eBay or a used camera store. Honestly, your most expensive product uh, that you'll purchase for your camera trap will be the sensor. And that is pretty much the brains of the operation. And once you get this purchased, everything else is relatively inexpensive. You can pick up a Pelican case for 50 bucks or less, make your own stand at home. The RAM mounts are only 10, 15 bucks. And then any camera, I mean, you can pick up a camera off of eBay, like I said, for around $100. Uh, and any camera will, will work for you. And so hopefully you've learned a lot in this video on uh, the equipment that I use and what works best for me. So in the next video, I'll actually be able to take all this equipment into the woods, set it up piece by piece, and show you exactly what I look for as far as trails are concerned, finding the right location, setting up the camera as far as settings, setting up your flashes as far as settings and light direction, and, and why I use certain settings versus others, and, and setting up your sensor. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.